Lord forgive me for this trap shit Sergeant Smack making backflip Telly hanged it with the action With the vital speaking Spanish Frank Matthews how I vanish Poof Came back like I'm King Tut Go BBS is on a beamer When Fat Cat was tearing queens up Fall off the profit not the re-up Fly like Puerto Rican Jesus Uptown like I'm Baby Main Just caught a touchdown From the Bay Oh uh, I mean, growing up for rock, for rock is the epitome of the hood. Like we got nothing. We ain't got a movie theater. We ain't got no malls, no nothing. Ain't nothing but guns and roses out there. So it is what it is. Like what I'm doing is basically impossible. We ain't never had nothing. No basketball <laughs> niggas. If you do your history, no football players. None of that shit. We ain't had nothing. So I'm like the Great White Hype, the fucking the, the New Hope. A local rap artist on the verge of making it big in the rap world has been gunned down in Queens. Stacked bundles were shot this basically morning. Basically stacked bundles and they got a Farrakh. So basically made it pop. Young half like the hung with the half not. So I'm on crack rocks and popping the stuff. Yeah. We can take them to Farrakh to Brooklyn and haul them on this one. Let's go. Like Bella Reed, let me remind you I'm getting a tattoo. You're caramel, dreaming your girl from Queens. They say I'm too pretty to be spitting six. I should be on the screen posing for me, but lean or be a baby fat girl kitten on my jean. Hood star, broad, black barber dog. Pardon me if the cockiness bothers y'all. Just be a now you spit Kool Aid. I spit acid out. Doing this since you was beat by classic doubt. And these hoes wanna get at me. Why? Cause I'm back to baby daddy. She ain't seen him since. Nick so got a little white tee and some Air Max on. Some don't say the bomb, pretty panties on. Like, wait till the summer catch me up. Now I'm on my way to five five front row with the rocker. And every ball of wonder. Never give out my number. Only the email. Cherrythong.com. Holla. Name a girl that's real as huh. No. Not them. Who's your best from C's? Nick Fox and Kim. Nick up in a Porsche box for the Benz. Ooh. I heard you, ma. I'm fucking with you. So you want to get on with that? I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. Okay. Nice to meet you. Hey. Hey. Shout out to Lupe Fiasco, it's my nigga, he really taught me a lot about the music shit or whatever. That was the first company I was signed with, first from 15th Arista. It didn't work out because it was so far, I was in Chicago, I'm a New York nigga and shit, so I came back home, got it popping, tore the streets up with the mixtapes and shit, started fucking with Clue. Because Clue was owning the mixtape at one, at one time and shit like that. Yeah, that's my nigga. That's my nigga. Like, that's my nigga, my nigga. So when you listen to the album, everybody heard the shout, they feel like, yo, how you know? It's my nigga. He told me a lot. It's basically everything I know about the music shit. Like, production-wise, whatever. So I turned it up. I turned it up on mixtapes and shit. Clue fucking with a nigga hall. Had the little Desert Storm situation. But nigga couldn't get no distribution. So, still, had the streets on fire, staying in the loop. I ran in the gym, we kept running into each other, you know me doing the things I do in the street, him running around, living that nightlife, and now it's history, niggas turning it up, the boy album about to drop November 7th and shit, the streets gravitating to me like it's my album coming out and shit like that, they fucking with us hard right now. I know a guy, come out here, young dude, used to love hip hop too. Came from a little place, you know, it's kind of far from here, about an hour outside the city. Called Far Rock Away. From a project called Red Fern. We used to be like 18, you know what I'm saying? We used to have like, I think, Bronzeville in like a basement. He's all in the basement cycling over at DR Period House, you know. And I was like, yo, I like this guy, man, I like this guy. A couple months later, caught a plane out of Shot Town. You know, he was my homie for like nine months. We lived in the same apartment, ate out the same dishes. I was in one room writing raps, he's another dude writing raps. We always talk about how he love his girl. I love his family. I ain't love Far Rock Away. And I was gonna be the first rapper to make it real big from out of Far Rock Away. And I was like, yeah, dog, that's that shit right there. Me and Party Ways came out to New York, came back out here. 
I signed my first solo deal with Arista Records. He went off to do his thing. Met each other some years later. He was rocking with Dipset, Jim Jones. We used to see each other from time to time. Then one day, I went on the internet, you know. It was like, huh. young rapper, Stack Bunk is murdered in this, in this project. You know, and I sat there and I shed my tears for my own. You know. Because even though he died, you know, and he went out like that. I know that hip hop saved his life, you know what I'm saying? But like, like I was, like I was into, I was into some whole different shit. I tell you no lies. Like I was fucking with, I was fucking with Bone Thugs. I was fucking with Bone Thugs hard. I was fucking with like Onyx. Onyx did it. Like Onyx did it, did it, did it, did it. Like Onyx did it. Had a nigga going to school, dumping niggas on the head and everything. I'm a special ed nigga and all that too. So Onyx really did it. Onyx did it stupid. Um. The Wu definitely did it. Like the, the, we had some. I was on some whole other, some whole other shit. But definitely Onyx, the Wu, all that shit. Y'all hear was playing right now too. That's that life's like a movie. A local rap artist on the verge of making it big in the rap world has been gunned down in Queens. Stacked bundles were shot this morning. It happened on the Beach Channel Drive in Far Rockaway. I would just use reporter Joe Torres is there with the very latest. Outside their cousin's home in Far Rockaway. They have no idea who shot and killed Raekwon Elliott early this morning. A My cousin wouldn't have any enemies. He's a very, very, very nice boy. So I don't know. I have no idea, but I hope we find out. He's driving around with a Porsche. He's throwing parties. He's running around that corner right there. He's staying on there, giving people that and just happy go lucky. Elliot was shot about five o'clock this morning in the lobby of his apartment building at the Redfern Housing Project. Police say the gunman shot him in the head and neck. Friends and family members told us he just returned from a night of partying at a Manhattan club. Envy and jealousy, they believe, were the motive for his killing. Hey, we back on my business. We talking about the Michael Jordan of Far Rock. I'm going to need the whole Queens. And definitely we going to need Far Rock America in the building. If anybody's from Far Rockaway, all my guys from the city, if y'all remember the time when Stack was running around the town, Y'all get in the comment box and drop a money bag or some. Now, a lot of people going to remember the person that we covering today for being one of the most up and coming, one of the most hottest and one of the most memorable artists to come out in a time when competition was probably at its all time high. We talk about the DVD era a lot on this channel. We going back even further than that. We talking about mixtapes and not just any mixtapes. We are talking about the DJ Clue times. And let me just say, it's one of them situations where you just had to be there. And I said that to say that today we have the pleasure of covering Raekwon, Stack Bundles, Elliot, Sir Squad Up, Mr. Riot Squad, Far Rockaway's First Hope. Now, if you remember Stack Bundles, one of the first things that you probably think about, or I'm going to say the first thing that I think about was the promise that he had. And I'm not quite sure why, but during the course of doing his episode, it had me looking to compare it to something. And the closest thing I could think was the NBA. And if I got any of y'all that follow the NBA, especially in the past, I'm going to compare Stack Bundles or his career to an NBA player that some of y'all probably forgot. And y'all feel free to let me know if I'm wrong or somebody better that his career could be compared to. But I would say a guy that played for the Portland Trailblazers by the name of Brandon Roy. And the reason I say Brandon Roy is not only was his career cut short due to injuries, 
was he was so promising. And not only that, he was not really great at one thing, but he seemed really good at a lot of different things, especially on the court. And that reminded me of Stack Bundles. So in a time where we had guys like Nas, Fabulous, um, even guys like really like Joe Buttons at that time, to be honest, the game was really a lyrical game at that time. And Stack Bundles wasn't, I want to say, as lyrical as some of the people I mentioned, but he was like just as good. His energy was there. His originality was there. His punchlines was, all of it just seemed to mesh and it made up the artist that we would grow to love named Stack Bundles. Now Stack would get his start on 1st and 15th Entertainment, which would eventually be the home of Lupe Fiasco. But that situation wouldn't end up working out and he would find himself on the mixtape market where he would really, really go on to make a name for himself after he would team up with some of New York's top DJs at that time. And we talking Breakfast Club famous DJ Envy, where they would team up in 2005 to drop Raps Makeover Volume 1. And he would apply even more pressure the very next year in 2016 when he would link up with DJ Clue and they would go on to drop Bidding War as well as Rap Makeover Part 2. And he would find himself in a situation with DJ Clue and his Desert Storm situation where he was signed to them. They were trying to sign him. And I remember him speaking on a situation where it was an issue with distribution. But if anybody remember Clue at this time, Clue was formerly in a serious roster. And at this time, I could remember Fabulous. And it's like Paul Kane came with Fabulous. Joe Buttons was messing with Clue Heavy at that time. And he also was trying to add stack bundles. So you could just imagine that roster. And it was even crazier back in 2005 to 2007. And that situation and that conglomerate kind of reminds me of the Orlando Magic in 2000 when they tried to bring in Grant Hill and Tracy McGrady. And they even talked about adding Tim Duncan right after the Penny Hardaway and Shaq shit fell down. But just like the situation with Lupe's label earlier, that wasn't meant to be. And he would find a home when he would link up with Jim Jones and go on to join the Bird Gang. And at this time, Bird Gang would be at their height where they had members like Max B, Mel Murder, Jaja. So with Jim Jones about to pop, the whole Bird Gang situation going crazy. And I remember Jim Jones would drop a seven day theory tape with DJ Drama that Stack Bundles was featured on predominantly. And a lot of people that would go on and hear that tape, they would await to see exactly what Stack Bundles was going to do on his own. And just that alone would make the situation that would occur on June the 11th, 2007, all the more tragic as hip hop outlets would begin to report that Stack Bundles had been out partying the night previously. And after parking his Porsche outside of his projects, he would end up being killed in the lobby of his building. Now, right after his death, it would be a lot of speculation that it was a robbery and his chain was missing, but authorities would find out that his wallet wasn't missing. A few days after his passing, the XXL, as well as numerous media outlets, would report that a suspect in a murder of Stack Bundles was found shot twice in the head, execution style, in a house in Queens on 176th Street. The XXL would identify him as a guy by the name of Charles White, a person that I would go on and know very well from my time in VA. I just known him as Self Not God. And I never forget the last time that I seen Self about a week before the murder of Stack Bundles. He had told me that he had been to New York and he had some big news to tell me. But before I could ever see him again, I would get a call from the person that semi introduced us. And he would let me know that Self was killed in Queens. And that fucked me up because the whole time I knew Self, he was asking me and my cousin if we could take him to New York. So he can try to see what it was like moving around in the city. So for him to be killed in an abandoned house on 176th Street didn't seem right to me. Less than a month after the murder of my dog, an NYPD officer by the name of Russell Tomashenko would end up being gunned down on July 14th, 2007. The police would go on to identify a guy by the name of Lee Woods. 
after Lee Wood's arrest, the Daily News would go on to link him to the murder of Stack Bundles. Lee Woods would end up being sentenced to life plus 40 for the murder of the cop, but we wouldn't hear anything else about the prosecution for Stack Bundle's murder, essentially leaving it a mystery to this day. Now, y'all know the rundown when we usually do these episodes. I go on to ask, where do you think these people would be today? How big would they be? Was y'all rocking with Stack Bundle's? When was the first time y'all remember hearing him? And do y'all think he would have made it to superstar status? So while Far Rock continues to wait for their first national success, they ain't never going to forget Stack Bundles. Y'all make sure y'all hit the red subscribe button right under this video so y'all know when this real trail spill shit is dropping. Y'all get in the comment box below. Y'all make sure y'all flooded, man. Y'all let me know what cities we need to go to, what stories we need to talk about, what gangsters we miss, what we got wrong, where we haven't been yet. All of that. Y'all make sure y'all follow me on Instagram, on Twitter, P-O-P underscore A underscore L-O-T. Y'all crank that stack bundles in his memory. And y'all know we gonna be back with some more real trill spill shit. This shit got pop a lot. Mob, gang, 